Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another Wargaming Adventure video. In this video, we're going to be painting some Dungeons & Dragons. Well, we're going to be painting a Dungeons & Dragons model. We're going to be painting this uh, Eye Beast. Uh, this is... Everyone knows that this is a Beholder, uh, but Reaper doesn't have the license to call it a Beholder, so they're calling it an Eye Beast. Uh, and that mouth is like gigantic. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and paint this up as a beholder for my D&D &D game. Uh, what I've already done is glued it down. This is a bones model, so this is like a plastic. But I've glued it down to a 2 inch by 2 inch uh, Litco base. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime it black. And once it's primed, we'll be back and we'll take a look. Okay, now that the eye beast is spray primed, uh, there is a little flaw with spray priming in that in certain, like I'm playing, I'm paint, I'm spraying it on a, uh, a board that prevents me from getting up underneath or spraying inside. Uh, so what you'll see is some spots that don't actually get hit very well. So what I do is I mix up some black, uh, just, just some black acrylic paint and I go over the model uh, hitting any little area that might have, like the spray paint might not have hit uh, because I want 100% black coverage on the model. I don't want to have, whoops, I don't want to have any spots that are uh, not primed. Or base coated, I should say. Base coated black is my base coat. And I water the black paint down so it is thin, uh, but what that also does is it allows it to uh, not clump up, you know, not, not, not lay too thick on the model, and it allows it to get down inside of all the cracks and everything in the mouth because it's laying on that plastic uh, I might need to put a couple of coats in there okay so I'm gonna let this first coat dry and then we'll be back into a second coat real quick All right, the next step is we're gonna paint the entire model with neon purple it's a pretty good looking purple color uh, I'm gonna paint the entire model and then we will go back and we will wash it with some Citadel Purple Wash to bring out all the highlights. Uh, I want you to know that when I paint this purple onto this model, I don't care if I cover the eyes or not. I'm going to try to avoid it. But if I do cover the eyes, it doesn't matter because I'm going to go back later and paint the eyes. And I will show you that technique in a minute. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint the entire model. This would be good for a beholder like in the Zoblob shop, because you know it's purple. Or it could be Xanathar. I think Xanathar's got some yellow on him. But really any beholder. All right, now, um, I'm not really liking the way this uh, purple is coming through. It's getting, it's turning, the apple barrel neon purple is drawing slow for one thing, but it's also, uh, drawing really dark on the model. It's not uh, it's not covering like it's supposed to. So what I did was I took some folk art, which always does a good color, and some purple, mixed it in, and we're going to go in with a second coat. Let's get that off of there. Now it's going to lighten it up a little bit too, I think. We'll see. Get the big brush all right so we got a big 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 brush see how those legs are like i call them legs but really they're eye stocks they're almost black I, I wanted them to be purple so we're going with we're going with a little bit deeper purple yeah that's going to look a lot better you notice how the folk art is covering a lot better yeah I mixed in a little bit of neon. Basically, I, I take that back. I, I took the folk art purple and I put it in the same bin that I had the neon purple in. So, so there is a little bit of a mixture. Yeah, that's a much better purple, I think. Okay, let's let that dry and we'll get back to it. 
All right, now on this eye beast, we're going to go ahead and paint the base. Um, painting it splinter blotches. Looks like there's a sword laying on that base. Huh. Might have to go in later and paint that sword on the base. Right now, I'm just getting a good coat of green. Now, this green's been watered down. Uh, and I'm going to paint it on the base. Now, I'm painting on top of a wood uh, Litco base. Uh, luckily, the base has been primed. But Litco bases, because they're wood, any wood base really, has a tendency to soak up or absorb paint. So you just have to be careful. Maybe you have to go back into a second coat. Uh, I did a primer on it, a black spray primer, so most likely it won't absorb. And just be careful not to paint the eye stocks. If you do, you just go back in with some purple and fix it. Alright, now am I painting the edges? Mm, yeah, might as well. I'm going to paint the edges. Sometimes I won't. Sometimes I'll leave them black or whatever primer coat I used. And the reason, or I'll paint, or actually I'll paint them a different color. Like I'll go back later and paint them a different color. And what that does is it allows you as a gamer to see the edge a lot easier of your base. All right, moving on to the next color. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the teeth knocked out while we're here. Get the white. I've got a fairly large brush. Um, because really all I'm doing is hitting the teeth up to the gum line. I'm not actually painting the gums white. I don't want to do that. Just want to paint the teeth white. Up to the gum lines. And with a beholder, you can paint the teeth any color you want. It doesn't have to be white. White is a little bit, maybe a little bit too perfect, but that's okay. He's a magical being, magical creature. He can have white teeth all he wants. <laughs> but I was going to say you could paint them black, red. Shoot, you can go green. Whatever color you want to paint the teeth is always good. Um, but I find that white contrasts with the black interior of the mouth quite a bit and it makes the tongue kind of stand out, you know, because you, you're kind of seeing that right there in the picture, you know. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the bottom. Now on some creatures, when their teeth aren't as big as these, these are giant teeth, but like when you got really small teeth, sometimes I'll go in and I'll dry brush the teeth. Because then each individual teeth will get its own, I'm sorry, each individual tooth would get its own like little coat. But this way, because these teeth are so big, I can paint them individually pretty much. And remember, if you can't see it to paint it, then it doesn't need to be painted. Because nobody else is going to see it to paint, to complain about it, you know. Not that anybody would complain about your paint job. They might critique you. Okay, now we're going to continue on with the white theme on the uh, beholder, but I'm going to change my brush a little bit because this is a big one. All right, now there's a number of eyes. So what I've done is here, I've, I'm going with some white, just pure, straight white, and I'm going to hit the ends of the eye stalks, right? with white and I'm basically just painting big circles on the ends of the eye stalks. I'm not even trying to be careful. I'm not even trying to keep them in the lines okay. or anything. So all the eye stalks have uh, just white blops at the end of them. And also you see there's one main anti-magic eye right in the middle. Uh, this is where the technique really comes into play and because uh, I'm, I'm, I picked this model specifically to teach this because of the large eye, uh, if you're painting a model, you're going to um, 
try to get all inside the lines and all that stuff and only paint the eye, you know, a certain and not paint the eyelids and stuff like that. Well, I'm telling you to ignore that process. Okay, I'm telling you, don't even worry about it. Just do this. <laughs> you see what I did? I just took some white paint and I put it in a circle right across the eye. And I don't care what I get it on. Haphazard, I don't give a crap. I just paint the whole thing. And I want to make sure, because it's such a large eye, that there's no brush strokes. So I dab. Not dab. I dab my um, white on so the eyes can dry evenly in a kind of a smoothie type look. All right, why this guy is drying, I thought I'd do a close up so you can kind of see a couple of things that I did on purpose. Uh, you can see that I painted on, like when I just slapped the white on to his eye, I, was, I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you that you don't have to be anal about it. You can just slap some white paint in the general vicinity of his eye. And you can do this on a small model as well. You can do this on a human. You can do this on a 15 millimeter figure. You can do it on any kind of model. Uh, and then I've got the white on the eye stocks. And all I did was just slap, it, slap some white paint on there. So um, let's let that dry. And then I'll show you the next step. And it is almost already dry anyway. All right, guys. So now what I did was I put a drop of black paint into my palette so that you can see. Now, I use black for my, uh, what do they call it, the iris or the, the what have you of the, of the model. Um, and I use a fairly big brush here. Now, this is a zero brush. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to put a dot And you notice that's not really even a dot. It's more like a teardrop. It's a, it's a line up and down is what it is. Let me give another line up and down. And another line up and down. All right, so now let's take a look at the center eye. Do I want to make it a round eye? iris or do I want to make it uh, a straight up and down line? Well, guess what? Either one will make it look like a round iris. But because it is such a large eye, I do kind of have to modify my technique just slightly. But on a small eye, you'll see that you just do a straight line like that. That'd be fine. But on a big eye like this, I'm going to make it oval. Not oval. I'm going to kind of give it a like a, a half circle here. And you notice I painted from past the eyelid to over the eyelid. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Went around. Now, am I going to leave that white spot there? No, that would be kind of a cool effect if I did, but I'm not going to. Okay, so far so good. I'm going to let the black dry. It should only take a couple of seconds, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that purple, and I'm going to go to each of my eye stalks, or my eye, when I get there, I'll show you, and I'm just going to draw a line across the eye stalk where the eyelid would be. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the top. Okay, I'm going to do that on this guy. Now this purple that I'm putting down matches the eye stock color. If you were doing a human, you would do the exact same thing. Okay, so all the little bitty eye stocks are done. So, let me show you 
the technique. It's pretty much the same technique. See where the mistake is on the white on the bottom eyelid? That's where you fix it. This is the time you fix it. And is there a mistake on the top? Doesn't look like it, but... Maybe just a little bit. You see how that eye was fixed like instantly just by doing that? All right, now the last step we're gonna do here is kind of touch up the, uh, the body because it's one consistent color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple of drops of white that I have and I'm gonna kind of mix them in with my purple that I've been using. Okay, and then I'm just going to go over it really quickly with a soft bristle brush. So this is not a dry brush technique. But what it is, it's going to be the raised areas are going to... I am kind of dry brushing, but trying to be very gentle about it. The rate, because I notice there's some serious raised areas. And I want to touch on those, giving them the lighter purple effect you can kind of see how that's working right now you hit the, a couple of eye stocks with the light purple to really make them stand out as well having a two-tone anything a jacket, armor, uh, eye stocks, body, whatever. Having that two-tone, the, uh, the darker underlay, maybe a wash, and then coming back later with some really light highlights, it makes that model stand out like boom. I mean, you can see the effect right now pretty much on camera, I hope. Uh, but we'll do some close-ups so you can see here in just a minute. These long stocks needed as well. And all that is is the skin, the base skin color with a couple of drops of white added in. to give it that a lighter tone of the exact same color. That might, have, that might have been a little bit too much, but that's okay. We're gonna drive on here. All right, I think that's done. Let me go ahead and uh, zoom in so you can take a look at that guy. All right, guys, thanks for coming out and watching me paint this entire eye beast from Reaper Miniatures. This is a bones model, so it is like a, like a what do they call those, that, that plastic material that they make it out of. Uh, it looks good. What do you think? Uh, it kind of looks like a, let me back this, let me back this up. Just. All right, so this guy is done. It is an eye beast from Reaper. It's made out of bones. Uh, you saw how it was painted and primed and and painted purple and painted the eyes and the teeth and all that good stuff. And you got the eye stalks all finished with their little eyes on the end and then his main big eye and his mouth. Looks pretty good. Uh, I didn't do the sword, but uh, maybe I'll do that at some time in the future. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming out and checking out this eye beast from Reaper. And I'll catch you next time.